Good morning. Today we're learning Maseches, Beitza, Daf, Kaf, and we're starting five lines from the bottom on Yud Testament Beis. At the very bottom of that page, it says, V'yotze ba mishum simcha, ve'eno yotze ba mishum chagiga. The context here was in regards to a korban toda, that if a person were to have brought a korban toda, so yes, you can fulfill your obligation to have basar in simcha el basar, you can fulfill the mitzvah of simcha as it relates to bringing a korban toda. However, you would not be able to be, to, you would not be able to fulfill the, your requirements as it relates to the korban chagiga. So says the Gemara, that, that should be pshita, that should be obvious. Three lines from the bottom on your test, Amit Beis, Dabr Shebechovahu. The Korban Chagiga is a Dabr Shebechova, and Rashi highlights the Pasuk of Vichago Sem. So we know that it's a Dabr Shebechova. The Chol Dabr Shebechova, Eino Ba Elamin HaChulen. The Korban of the Chagiga must emanate from an animal that's Chulen, that is not holy. But if you're bringing a uh, Korban Toda and trying to double your efforts and say, ah, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop a rind. I'm going to say that my korban toda is also my chagiga. So says the Gemara that that's not allowed. So that should. So then, why is it then that we would assume that it uh, that it would work for a korban chagiga? Obviously, it should not work for a chagiga. So answers the Gemara. Lo tzricha da'afal gav de parish. Even if he was explicit about it, says Rashi. Last line. Dibra maschal da'afal gav de parish. Kishanodar hatoda. When this person volunteered voluntarily offered up a toda, pirish. He said al nanas sheyotze by de chagigaso. It wasn't after it was established to be a korban toda. Before it was established to be a korban toda, he said, I want this to have a, a dual purpose. Says the Gemara, that doesn't work. Um, and that is, amine, says the Gemara, amine, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish me Rabbi Yochanan. And what do we see in this conversation between Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan? That Haomer, if a person says, Hare alai toda, the eight say ba yide chagiga, an explicit case, our case, if a person says, while the animal is still chulen and still not holy. And he says, I, uh, the language of Hare Alai is a language of neder. He's bringing a, he's forcing himself to bring a korban toda. And he says, I'd also like to be Yosei Chagiga. Or if he says, Hareni Nazir, top of Chachafam Aleph, Hareni Nazir, Va'agalech Mimos Maeser Sheni. I'm going to become a Nazir and I'm going to be using Maeser Sheni to pay for the haircut. So, Mahu, what's the halacha in that case? This was the question of, uh, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish to Rabbi Yochanan. What did Rabbi Yochanan respond? Amar le, Nidor, your neder actually does work, but the eno yotze. What does that mean? Yes, you have to bring the toda, but no, you have not been yotze the korban chagiga. And as well by nazir, you're a nazir, a person who says that they are considered a nazir. However, the eno megalech, but it doesn't, the second part of your statement doesn't work. I'm not saying this is exactly this, but there's a principle that we've seen in the Gemara called Palginan Dibura, where we take your sentence and we literally parse it in the middle. So let's just look at the language at the bottom of the page there. Haomer, harealai toda, ve'etze ba'yedei chagiga. So your fir the first part of your sentence works because you use the language of neder, hare alai x. You, that person said hare alai toda. You're done. You're cooked. You, you're obligated to bring the korban toda. The second part of your sentence, that's your problem. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. You're not yotze the korban chagiga. So that's what the Gemara says here. And if you look at Rashi, a beautiful Rashi, the third line down in Rashi, Dibraham Maskal, Nazir ve'enu megalech, and look to the end of the Rashi, de'keivan de'omar hare alai, once he says the language, quote, of hare alai, nishayiv, then he becomes obligated in whatever he said hare alai, in this case, the Korban Chagiga, de'amir legavoa, kimesir lehedyot, that once you verbally tell a Kodesh Baruch Hu, hare alai, X, then it's as if you gave over the animal. And when you then later said Almanas to do X, that's irrelevant. That's Lav Milsahi. I am going to bring upon myself a Korban Toda and it will double as a Korban Chagiga. The first part of your sentence is correct. Good. You're obligated to bring the animal, but no, you cannot then fulfill your mitzvah of the Korban Chagiga. And that was what the Gemara was opening with over here with this, uh, with this bottom sugya. And the Gemara is going to tell a couple stories. This is uh, quite the error to make. Ahu Gavra, there was a wealthy man, to Amar Lehu, he said to his servants, Havu Lei, go find uh, this man, Mr. Perfect, go find uh, Mr. Groom, Havu Lei Arba Meos Zuze, give this man 400 Zuz, Leploni, and then Velinsi Barti, and he can marry my daughter. So he said two parts of the sentence, right? Omar Rav Papa, Arba Meos Shakil, the person is allowed to take the 400 Zuz, Uberate, in regards to his daughter, 
if she's the, if she's the right person, then he'll marry her. And if not, not. But because the person parsed his comment, or at least halakhically, we parsed his comment, give him $400 and he can marry my daughter. So no, then the 400 is, tra that's transactional, you're done. But the marriage is secondary. That's like what, 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 what Rashi said, it's, it's lav milsahi, it's irrelevant. Taima says, the Gemara line six, to Amar havu le First you said, give, give him the money. And then you said, to get married. Aval, had he reversed it. I Amar you said, marry my daughter and then I'll give you 400. Then it's conditionally Nasiv Shakil. Then only if they get married, can he have the 400 Zeus? The low Nasiv, low Shakil. And then, uh, then the money would not, uh, would not transfer if they didn't get married. Yosef Merema was giving shir. When he quoted this sugya, when he was discussing this sugya about the Korban Chagiga, he just quoted it without quoting anybody. He didn't say Rav Yochanan's name. He didn't say Rav Shem Lakish's name. Nothing. Omar Le Ravina, the Marema. Ravina says to him, Atun Hachim Asnisola. That's how you teach this. What's going on here? Anan, when we learned it, Kedibami Ne Resh Lakish, Mirab Yochanan Masnisola. We learned this as though it was a dialogue between Rav Shem Ben Lakish and Rav Yochanan. You should always quote things in the name of those who said them. Uh, one uh, one fifth of the way down it says the Gemara at the two dots. Tani Tana Kamid Rav Yitzchok Bar Bar Abba. The Brisa writes this file. It's quoting the pasuk by Akrevas Haola by Yaseh Hakamishpat pasukim that we're very familiar with. You should be karev the Ola. You should sacrifice the Ola. This is referring to an Ola Schola Chova. By Yaseh Hakamishpat and you should do it like the rules are. What is this referring to? So it says the Gemara, Kimishpat Olas Nadava. We learn from the world of Olas Nadava. Namely, if a person is makabal upon themselves to bring an Ola, they are obligated to do smicha. They're obligated to put their head on the animals and press full weight. So too by an Olas Chova. So it says the Gemara, Li made al Olas Chova, Shetuna Smicha. We learn from the world of Olas Nadava, from a voluntary Ola to the world of an obligatory Ola, that you have to do smicha. Omar Le, the Gemara says, third of the way down, to Amar Lachmani, whose opinion is this brisa that Rav Yitzhak Bar Abba quoted? Says Gemara, Beishamai. It's Beishamai's opinion. How do we know? Because Beishamai was the low gamre shalme chova me shalme nadava. Beishamai was not willing to learn the halachos of shalme chova from shalme nadava. And we therefore assume that he also wasn't willing to learn from Olas Chova to Olas Nadava. The Ibeis Hillel, had it been that this line of Rav Yitzchak Bar Abba was Beis Hillel, so says the Gemara one third of the way down on Chaf Aleph, had it been that it was Beis Hillel, Kevan de Gamre Shalmei Chova Me Shalmei Nadava, since Beis Hillel does learn from Shalmei Chova to Shalmei Nadava in regards to Smicha, we could also therefore assume that he would learn Olas Chova Nami Loti Boy Kra that he could also learn it in the same way. If you're willing to logically learn from the world of Shalmei Chova to the world of Shalmei Nadava, you should equally be willing to learn from Olas Chova to Olas Nadava, and then you wouldn't need a Pasuk, but the Gemara quotes a Pasuk to teach this halacha. It says the Gemara, de gamre mi Olas Nadava. Because we know that uh, Olas Chova is learned from Olas Nadava, and because um, because Hillel learns from Shalmei Choma to Shalmei Nadava, so therefore there's no need for a Pasuk. So it says the Gemara, not necessarily. How do we know that Beis Hillel learns the obligation for smicha by a shalmei chova from the world of shalmei nadava? Dilma, perhaps, maybe the source that Beis Hillel holds for shalmei chova that shalmei chova needs a uh, that need that it needs smicha. Dilma me olas chova gamre, olas chova gufa boikra. And maybe that would be, would be the use of the pasuk. So it says the Gemara, "My shna mi shalme nedava the lo gamre shekain mitzuyan." You want to argue that he's learning from from uh, from olas chova? That doesn't help. What's the difference between olas chova and uh, between uh, Ola, olas chova in this case? My shna mi shalme nedava the lo gamre. You're not able to learn out uh, shalme nedava from shalme chova because shekain mitzuyan. There's far more shlamim that are given in a volunteer basis than on a halachically required basis. Basis, me olas nadava nami. When it comes to me olas chova nami, excuse me, uh, lo gamre shekain kalil. Olas chova is also uh, something you shouldn't be able to learn from because it's kalil, because it's completely consumed. So therefore, the question is back to where we started, which is who is the author of this brisa? And the Gemara says, Ella asimi benaya, the Beis Hillel really uh, learned a little bit from two places. He learned the chiyuv of smicha by shalme chova both. Uh, by Shalmei Chova, both from Shalmei Nadava and from Olas Chova. And therefore, this brisa could be like either of their opinions because we're going to need a Pasuk no matter what.
We're a little bit more than halfway down. Says the Gemara, there was an implication left here, just kind of a loose string here. The Savre Beis Shammai Shal Nechova Lo Smicha. It implies from the Gemara that Beis Shammai, well, the Gemara says that Beis Shammai doesn't learn Shal Nechova to Shal Nechova. So if Beis Shammai doesn't learn Shal Nechova to Shal Nechova, it implies Lo Bo Smicha. That when it comes to Shal Nechova, that there's no Smicha. But the Gemara says that's not true. The Atanya, two thirds of the way down, Amar Reb Yossi, we see here black on white that Beis Shammai does require, just like Beis Hillel, that there should be smicha by Shammai Chova. And if that's true, let's finish this price. What then are they arguing about? I'll take Efle smicha shchita, when the smicha needs to take place. According to Beis Shammai, she Beis Shammai omrim enotzarich. Beis Shammai says the smicha does not need to take place immediately before the actual shchita. By the way, this is why Beis Shammai I can hold that the smicha can take place before Yantif while the shrita takes place on Yantif because he says that the smicha and uh, we have a principle like this in Hilchos Nida that that uh, that chafifa one when one cleanses one's body prior to but that that should be done samach l'tefila fine but here that's a machlokas in regards to smicha and shrita beishamai says it doesn't need to be um, uh, right one after the next so so this brisa clearly indicates that even beishamai is of the opinion that shal the shamechova does require smicha so answers the gemara who de amar ki haytano Really, uh, he holds like the following Tana. The Tanya says the Bryce of 15 lines from the bottom of the page, Chaf Meralev. Amar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, lo nech leku beishamai veselel, al tekev les micha shechita shetzarech. Everyone agrees, says the Gemara, we're re-understanding this b'risa, everyone agrees that smicha needs to be immediately before the shechita. So we see here that Beis Hillel has an explicit b'risa that says, that he holds that there is no smicha in regards to Shalmei Chova. And that brings us to the two dots toward the end of the page on Chaf Maral, 12 lines of Tan Rabbana. Maisa Behilal Hazakin. This is just a couple of quick, a couple of stories. Uh, there was a story with Hillel Hazakin. Shehevi Ola Sola Azara. He brought a korban Ola, which is a male animal. He brought it to the Azara. Lismo Chaleha Biyomtov. He was going to do smicha. He was going to bring his korban. Now, at this time in the Beis Hamikdash, it was quite a contentious time between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel because things were actually playing out. If you hold like Beis Shammai, so then you don't do smicha, and if you hold like Beis Hillel, you do smicha. So says the Gemara. What happened? Hebrew, I love Talmide uh, Shammai Hazakain. All of these Talmidim of Shammai, they gather around the great hill of Hazakain because Be Shammai was of the opinion that you don't do smicha. What kind of animal is this? Amar lo mati vashel What are you doing with this animal? Amar lahem, oh, don't worry, nekevahi, it's a female animal. Code word for this can't be an ola. Ulezivche shlamim hevisiha. I'm just bringing it for zivche shlamim. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi, last line of the page. Crazy Rashi. Rashi says... He pushed it lied, straight up, not true, but you can be He knew that this was going to be a huge machlokas. So he said, I, this is not worth it. We're in Mamish and Beis Hashem. I'm going to tell them that the animal is a female animal. So, uh, and what did he do to make them believe in that? It's not so difficult to tell what gender the animal is. So, Kish Kesh Lahem Bizanava, back in the Gemara, five, six lines from the bottom. Kish Kesh Lahem Bizanava, Kish Kesh La is the change. Bizanava, Vahalchu Lahem. He did something with the animal's tail that, that they would have appreciated that would have implied that it was a female animal, whatever it was. Okay, so that's what the Gemara says. Also, Hayom on that day, Gavra Yodam Shal Beis Shammai Al Beis Hillel, Ubikshuli Fu Halacha Kamosa. They wanted that day, there were so many people from Beis Shammai in the Beis, in the Beis Amikdash, they wanted the Halacha to then be like Beis Shammai because of majority rules, but it didn't play out. Three lines from the bottom. There was one great Talmud Chacham who was a Talmud of Shammai, the Baba Ben Buta Shemo. His name was Baba Ben Buta. Says the Gemara, Shahaya Yodea, he knew, even though he was in another camp personally, Shahalacha ke Beisilo. He knew that the Halacha was like Beisilo. The Shalach says the Gemara, top of Chaf Mabez, the Hevi Koltzon Kedar Shebi Yerushalayim. So he went out, he was proactive, he rebelled against his party line. He was proactive, he went out and got a bunch of beautiful sheep. The Hemidan Ba'azar and brought them into the Azar the Beis Mikdash. Ba'amar, call me Sherot Selismoch, Yavo Yismoch. I might be a Ben Shammai Jew, but I know what the din is. The din is like Beis Hillel that we hold that there is smicha. Anyone who wants to do smicha, come, come do smicha. The Osa Yom says the Gemara third line, Gavar Yadon Shal Beis Hillel, the Kavu Halacha Kemosan, and we paskin like Beis Hillel that smicha is therefore done. Below Hayasham Adam Sheir Erbedaver Klum. Nobody pushed back on Baba Ben Buta. 
because he was like one of the elders of that chevra. And he said, guys, we're just wrong. That's just what it is. The halacha is not like us. The halacha is like Beis Hillel. The kachaba. Says the Gemara, Shuv Maisa B'Talmud Echad, another story. This is a great story about how, how one should respond in a fight. So it says the Gemara that uh, this person uh, of Beis Hillel brought an animal, an ola, to the Azar, one of the Talmidim of Beis Shammai, a kanoi, he came over, he wanted to chepper him for bringing an animal for, on which he was going to do smicha. Amar lo, mazu smicha, all of a sudden you're going to do smicha, that's not the din. So he, he just responded calmly, this Talmud of Beis Hillel, Amar lo, mazu shsika, what about your silence? <laughs> that was the whole conversation. He was so frustrated by the response that he walked away, but the person responded calmly. He responded quickly. Therefore, what do we learn from this story? When you have a Tamar Chacham, and his friend is, uh, is negotiating with him in Halacha, but the Halacha is not like that person. Don't say anything more than just respond in kind. If your person asks, don't get into a whole dialogue. Say your point, but say it tersely, quickly, and move on. It doesn't have to be a whole debate, every halacha. Okay, you should be quiet now. That's not the din, and move on. Don't make it into a whole battle. Quarter of the way down, tafchaf mebez at the two dots. Tanya, the Brisa writes, Amru lahem beis hillel beis shamay. Beis hillel says to beis shamay, this whole sugya we're going to learn now is about the olas re'ia, which is an animal that needs to be brought be uh, behakrava. It needs to be brought by the beis hamikdash when one goes up to the beis hamikdash. And there was a machloka between beis hillel and beis shamay if an olas re'ia can be brought on yomto. We're going to see two different approaches, and then we're going to conclude. Says the Gemara as follows. Tanya, the Brisa writes, Amru lahem beis hillel beis shamay. Uma b'makom in a case where uh, where it's aser lehedyot, namely where you're not allowed to cook on uh, on the holiday when it's Shabbos, mutter legavoa, we're still allowed to bring korbanos. Then on a day of makom she mutter lehedyot, on a day where you're allowed to cook, namely when it's yom tov, eno din she mutter legavoa. All the more so we should be allowed to. If, if I can cook a corned beef for myself, can't I bring an olas reiya to Hakadosh Baruch Hu? What a stira. If it's mutter to cook on Yantiv, I should be able to bring an Olas Re'iyah, says Beisel to Beishamai. Oh, Amr al Beishamai, no, that's not true. Nedarmu nedavos yochichu. Beishamai says that that's not correct because we see from voluntary uh, korbanos that that's not the case. Shemutter lehed yod, that on Yom Tov you're allowed to cook, yet we see by Nedarmu nedavos v'asr legavoa, that according to this approach, Nedarmu nedavos cannot be brought. So says the Gemara, the same should be true by Olas Re'iyah. There's another time to bring it. Don't bring it now. So says the Gemara, Amr Lem Beis Hillel. Beis says, what kind of argument is that from the Dharam Hunadavos? Ma'alin Adharam Hunadavos ain't kavulem zman. Bring it whenever you want. Go bring it next Tuesday. Why are you bringing it now on Yonti? That's ridiculous. Of course, in the Dharam Hunadavos, you can bring it another time. But the Ola Sriya should be brought right now. So it says the Gemara, Tomar Ba'ola Sriya she kavua lazman. But the Ola Sriya, that does have a time frame. It's right now. It's the Shalash Regalim. It should be brought right now. Amar Lem Beishamai. Beishamai says back to him, no. Afzo eno kavua lazman. The Ola Sriya does not have a fixed zman and therefore should not be brought on Yontif. It's not on the Mishnah writes, Misha lo chag. A person who was who did not celebrate, but it means here the verb of bringing the animal. A person who didn't bring their korban chagiga on the first day shel chag. You can bring it over the course of the whole vacation. Bring it by the end of Yom Just bring it before the holiday lets out. That is called a time frame. What are you talking about? You should bring it then, says the Gemara. Afzu halfway down. Afzu kavuolazman. This is what we consider a time frame of the olas reiya. It's non of our haregel velochag. If a person misses the window, literally of our zmano butla korbano, it's now the day after uh, the day after simchas Torah. You totally missed your window. Eno chay becher yosir. You're done. The animal. You're not chayv on its achrayz. You you can't bring the korban anymore. Amr lembe shamai. I don't understand. Beisilel. I hear what you're saying, but what do you do with the psukim? Amru lahem beis beis Amru lahem beis Hillel v'halokvar. I skipped a line. Amru lahem beis Shamai v'halokvar namar lachem v'lo legva. It says that when you do a hakrava, it should only be for you, something you can eat from. But the olas re is an ola; it's completely consumed, even with all your svaras. But what do you do about the pasuk? The pasuk says lachem v'lo legva. 
So Amr Lem Beiselel, nope. I look for Nemar Lashem, Kulo, called the Lashem. Anything that's for a Kaddish Baruch Hu can be brought, and therefore we would bring the Ola Sriya. So says the Gemara, how does Beiselel learn the word Lachem? In Kain Matam Lomar Lachem, says the Gemara, Lachem Velalukusim, Lachem Velalukulavim, that you can bring Korbanos for yourself. Yes, absolutely. And you can bring them for Hashem, but you can't bring a Korban for a guy, and you can't bring a Korban for an animal. Nothing, nothing of the sort. You can't even shech for them. It has to be for you. Good. And that brings us to two thirds of the way down. All of this was approach one about Ola Sriya, but Abishol gives a much cleaner, simpler mushal. Abishol, Om Rabbalashon Acheres. He says things a little bit differently. Uma bim makom she kiras chastuma, where your oven is closed, kiras rab chapsucha. In a case where you where the, your oven is closed, it's Shabbos, you're not allowed to cook. But the one of a Kodesh Baruch Hu is, uh, is closed, we understand that case. But where your oven is open, when it's Yantif and you're allowed to cook, all the more so your Olas Riyah should be brought. If you're allowed to cook for yourself, you should be able to bring for a Kodesh Baruch Hu. should be ABCs. This is logical. Says the Gemara, Your table is going to be full, all decked out with all the proteins and all the finest and meats and chickens and whatever, duck, whatever you're eating. But you didn't bring a korban for a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Why not? doesn't make sense. So these are the two different approaches with only minor variations. What are the two different approaches here? Why is it that Abishal brought a different example? So the reason why, says the Gemara, and we saw this the other day, is that there's a machlokas within Beis Hillel of whether or not we say that there are there is such a thing as voluntary korbanos. So my, my why is Abishal bothering to bring this mushal after we had a whole half a page of dialogue? Says the Gemara, Mar Savar Nidar Munadavos Kraven Biyomtov. According to Abishal, the voluntary korbanos are brought on Yomtov. Mar Savar and the initial approach that we learned on the first third of the page is Ain Kraven Biyomtov. And that's what the difference between them is. So it says the Gemara on that note about the Dharma and the whether or not they're Karib, Amr Abhuna. We're four fifths of the way down, 20 lines from the bottom of the page. He says, According to the person who says you're not allowed to bring voluntary korbanos, is that a din de oraisa or a din de rabbanon? Lo teima mi de oraisa mechsa chazu barabbanon de grazu hu gzeira shema yeshe. It's not out of rabbinic concern that you're not allowed to do nadarim unadavos. Rather, ella afilu mi de oraisa nami lo chazu. You're not even allowed to bring a voluntary, uh, a voluntary korban. Anyantif uh, midoraisa. You're not allowed to bring it. Lachoritz and Isser deraisa from the Gemara. So how do we know this? To hashtei halechem, because the Gemara says that when it comes to Shavuos and we bring the korbanos of shtei halechem, the chovas hayom ninhu. There we have an obligation on that day to bring it. But lekal emigzar shema yishe. There we say, I'm not concerned about you, uh, you know, creating a whole pile of korbanos to bring them all at the same time. The eno doche loas hashabbos veloas hayom tov, and that korban cannot cannot uh, interrupt. Uh, meaning because of that concern, we don't therefore say that it's not going to be Doche Shabbos and Yom Tov. And therefore, according to the Shita that says Nadarim and Nadavos are not Karev, that one is not allowed to bring voluntary Karbanos, then Halacha would be that even Midor Raisa, one is not allowed to bring that. We're going to stop here, 10 lines from the bottom on Chaf the base. We'll pick up Emir Tzashem. What day is it? Today's, today's Monday. Tomorrow. So we'll pick up tomorrow, 45 minutes before Mincha. Wishing you all a beautiful day and a beautiful Yom Tov.